Two Crows is back and the Vampire Slayer Nun is coming along with him. Let's talk about The Spear of Destiny, the sequel to The Widow's Son. I'm the Bald Book Geek, I'm the host, and like, subscribe. All of the links, including links to these books, are in the description below. So, let's talk about this novel, well, novella. He has a way with writing that is unique. And that is the best description I've got for it. You have the Fistful of Demons, you have the Widow's Son, and now you have this. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, a weird western is a hybrid genre of classic storytelling of the Wild West mixed with elements such as steampunk, fantasy, horror. It can cross those boundaries, and I love it. Now, you have Two Crows and this nun going across looking for the Spear of Destiny, because if the bad guys get it, all hell is going to break loose, and the tension runs high in this book. It's 160-something pages in the size that I was reading it, and oh my god, it keeps you on the edge of your seat. I read it completely in one night. He has a way with writing that is unique. He has a way of creating stories and characters that are so integral and so interconnected to the story. It's fantastic. It's a rare talent. Uh, Ryan has a voice as a writer that I love, and I think his history uh, comes into it. He's, I mean, I, I say this, the whole line of fiction and stories and everything that he creates, it's a genre that doesn't necessarily get a lot of love. And that's a real shame. His short story, Little Mouse, is also fantastic. Fist of Demons is an anthology of many, <laughs> many short stories which I adored. And The Widow's Son, it remains one of my favourite books. And this is a worthy one to sit next to it. The tension is ramped up. The characters are on the edge of their seats as you read. It doesn't force feed you a narrative, it f pulls you in. He's very good at descriptive world building, and that is a refreshing change. Going by some of the books that I've read, where the setting is more allegory, and the characters are just there to be superfluous. He has a way of just tying everything together, and you can feel the tension, you can feel what's happening, going on in the background. And just this fantastic read, as a writer, surprised me. Because Weird West is something I'm very nerdy about. And I've read a lot of bad attempts at Weird Westerns, and his is definitely not one of them. I came out of this book wanting more. I came out of this story, and I ended up rereading The Widow's Son and A Fistful of Demons for the umpteenth time at this point because I think these characters are fantastic. Each character stands alone, and each one of them has a very unique and distinct voice. You never have to double-check who you're reading, because that's the key of his writing across all of his books and stories, is that the characters' voices are so individual. It's fantastic. <laughs> I intended on reading this on one half of the train journey and picking up the second, I ended up reading the whole thing through and I reread it a second time and I was not disappointed. Just a great book with great characterization, great story, great world building, and a book that kept me as a reader on the edge of my seat. Suitably short, but it doesn't feel short. It doesn't feel like a novella. There's so much happening, you feel like you're reading a novel. And just the way that he can pull the story together is fantastic. The tension especially. Oh god, the tension. Especially towards the end, where everything is coming together, and without giving spoilers away, the, the stakes are high, and you feel that, and they progressively get ramped up. And that's, again, an art form in itself. A great writer with a great voice. And someone that I genuinely adore. And it's refreshing. That's the best word to describe this book. It's a refreshing novel. And as I'm recording this at two o'clock in the morning, because I cannot sleep, I think I'll go on a reread. It's rare a book like this really... Weird West in general, like I said, it's my favourite. One of my favourite sort of genres. But 
it's so difficult to get right. And I mean that. There are a few writers that do, and a few writers that definitely don't, and I've read many of them. And I've talked about westerns. Uh, it's my Westerns as a whole is one of my favourite genres outside of fantasy and science fiction, so I'm always good with this kind of thing. I feel guilty because I should have reviewed this sooner, and literally... I genuinely forgot, so there's been a few fast edits in this video to put in some new information on my reread. And coming out of my reread, my opinions stay the same. If anything, they're stronger. The characters, there's a very different experience reading on a train to reading when you're sitting at home in the quiet of your own house, and you realise the depth of these characters and the depth of how it's brought together and the world building. Again, that beautiful wordy, poetic world building that he's very good at with the descriptives. Short, subtle and sweet, but they're enough to paint this picture. So when I read, I picture the book in my head like a novel. It, I see everything, and having strong descriptives really helps with that. And just overall, a good, good novel and a worthy sequel. I can't wait for more. I want more from these characters. I want to know what's going to happen with Two Crows. And the Am I Slaying None, and countless other little things that pop up, and just keep me informed and keep me connected. Absolutely fantastic, and um, as I said, links below if you're interested in reading them.